Little carrots. Beautiful. Today we're going to talk about successes and volunteers in the garden. Today, what do you think is the most successful thing we've grown? This year? Well, it was just July, but um, our we had an awesome lettuce harvest. We had a great broccoli, cauliflower harvest, cabbage. I feel like just other than the fact that we have not kept up with the weeds, our harvest has been pretty good. I'm gonna try to hide the weeds in this video, but <laughs> actually, I don't care. We need to harvest our onions. And our, these carrots. And we need to get everything ready for fall planting. We need to plant probably next week. So I asked her what the most successful thing is, and she talks about what we need to do. I know, <laughs> so I'm, I'm so sorry. I want to celebrate some things that have been successful. You're like, okay, what's next? Um, I was extremely pleased with our lettuces. Yeah. I mean, we ate and ate and ate from that, and it was the most delicious lettuces I've ever had. And we didn't just grow one kind, we grew many varieties. Every salad that we made had so much flavor. I ate salad sometimes three times a day when it was in. Here's something that we grew successfully, oh, yeah. really probably our most successful crop of dill. Okay, but I wanna show you this because this is so beautiful to me and I need to harvest it. We grew a lot of cilantro, but I let it bolt and flower. And when there were flowers, I did that so that pollinators would come into our garden. But now it's time to harvest the seeds of some of it, not all of it's ready. But that is coriander, and I use a lot of coriander, like um, not only to eat, like throughout oh, the wow. year, Shimmy. but we put it in our sausages. Yeah. So it'd be, it'd be pretty cool this fall when we're putting coriander in our sausages for flavor that we we grew it ourselves. Isn't That'd that be cool? really cool. One of the key things this year that I feel like was successful is not a specific crop, but this concept that we grew. A lot of things successfully we've never been able to grow before. Cabbage is a really good example. We've grown beautiful cabbage this year. Some of them are still out here. Some of them are in sauerkraut. Some of them we've eaten fresh. There's, I think there may be one in the fridge. And we feel like we kind of have this grasp on growing it now. So that's really great. Now you're re-harvesting broccoli. Yeah. These are little broccoli heads. After the big main head is harvested, these broccoli plants will grow these little shoots. But between the, all of this little shoots and this, I think I could make some broccoli, um, carrot, beef stir fry yeah. tomorrow. I'm gonna go grab a basket. It's so fun when plants volunteer in the garden. For one, they get about the earliest start that they could possibly get because the seed are just left there from the previous year and then they just germinate as soon as they can. All of these sunflowers are volunteers from last year. Um, the birds come in, the goldfinches especially come in, and it's so beautiful because the goldfinches, they're these bright yellow birds in the yellow and the orange sunflowers. It's just beautiful. And they eat the seeds and they drop seeds, and then they reseeded themselves in the middle of these flowers, the onions, in the middle of the strawberries, in the middle of the asparagus. I said, Brie, come on, let's shoot this video, and she's still over there harvesting broccoli, which I guess is the whole point. I said, come on, let's go, we're running out of light. The sun set, the sun just set. Um, one, a great success this year, this is not something that we've never grown before, is, is a kale. And this may look like a weed patch here. Once it got started, it has grown this variety. We need, I need to look back and see if I can figure out which variety this is. It's been so good. It's not bolted, it's not gone to seed. It's still, there's some holes eaten in the leaves by bugs, but it's still producing this really amazing, delicious kale. It's good too. It's pretty. I think asparagus is a success. We didn't harvest it that much, but we thought it might be dead because the pigs had been in it and the yep. chickens, and it's not dead. <laughs> no, it's a jungle. <laughs> it's a jungle. A jungle of asparagus. Mm -hmm. Here's another success Brie wanted uh, to talk about. Yes. These are elderberry flowers from the elderberries. Did you plant this this year? Yeah. I cannot believe we're getting flowers on our elderberry. To me, this is a huge success and a step in growing just some of our own medicine. Um, elderberry is good for your immune system in the winter. And I tend to make elderberry syrup every year, but I always buy the berries. Here's a giant 
elderberry. This is a not a volunteer, but when I planted, this is a wild elderberry from Western North Carolina. We need to get a Japanese beetle, some Japanese beetle traps. Okay. And then we got our raspberries off to a good start. Yeah. There's a few Japanese beetles on. The Japanese beetles are on the raspberry. There's a couple raspberries here. Look at that. <laughs> They're not ripe. But our raspberries are doing good. Our blackberries are, they're alive. They, they don't look bad, but they're just small. They got planted late. But I'm, this is so exciting to us that we got these in the ground. So we're looking forward to next year to see how they do and see what they produce. Something I am feeling successful, even though I haven't gotten a single fruit yet, is our tomatoes. <laughs> um, we just tried a different method of stringing them up this year. They haven't, they haven't blighted yet. And we have lots of fruit coming on. Like just look here, it's so beautiful. And if you're watching channels of YouTubers in other states, a lot of people are picking tomatoes now. Yeah, but we're in a different zone. We're in a different this zone. Actually, looking like it's having a hard time with something. And we started, um, we started them out slightly late, but not late, very late. Not very late. But they're growing great. I'm they're doing good. Is that not so beautiful? And look here, look at this one. It's two. Very pretty. Those are aromas. They're called San Marzano, and they're known for um, sauce. And I mostly just want to make a bunch of tomato sauce. So San Marzano, that's like Fran French, isn't it? I think it's Italian. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna. Di I'm mostly gonna, basically only gonna do sauce and diced tomatoes. That's all I need it for. Diced for chili and curry, and sauce for pizza and spaghetti. Yeah, but these are supposed to be like paste tomatoes, thicker. So they don't make a watery sauce. They make like a thicker sauce. Purple basil. I always put my basil with my tomatoes just for fun. And then I'll have just a regular sweet basil. And I actually need to come out here and harvest a bunch because I have a lot of it. And I need to make pesto and dry some for the year for herbs for the kitchen. We're loving this string method of tying up the tomatoes. It's just, it's just a lot cleaner and also allows the plants to go a lot higher um, than staking them that we've done in the past though we're not doing like a lower and lean method which that and if you do that you can actually grow your plants diagonally and they can get like 12 15 feet long but these will be able to get up to well above six feet i just grow purple beans for fun of course we'll eat them they're easy to pick though because you can find them they are easy to pick because you can find them i we're gonna have to start spraying for mexican bean beetles soon we'll use neem oil We'll do that in the evening because we are starting to get them on the plants. You can show the damage there. The, most of the plants look good, but then you look at a plant just like this out of the blue and it's like, what? <laughs> Why is this one plant yeah, like so beat up? One of my big garden goals this year was to not um, lose to the Mexican bean beetle, which <clears throat> we've always gotten beans, but our, our harvesting time has just been cut short. Last year we didn't put any beans up because of them. Yeah, we ate them fresh and then we didn't, weren't able to preserve any at all. And that's like a huge thing for us in the winter is beans. And I grew a kind this year, I grew a long skinny tenderette bean um, because we tend to like to stir fry them and I can still chop them up and put them in soup. But I'm excited about having long, and I want to make dilly beans. It's been years. Look at these sweet potato plants, looking beautiful. In about five minutes, we're going to be up to our ears in squash. They're just, this plant's just covered with these little squash. It'll just be a few days, not minutes. I didn't even know we were growing zucchini and squash. Like, just plain zucchini, plain yellow squash. And so Lorraine had given me some the other day. So I was like, I didn't grow any. Can I have some of yours? I like baby zucchinis. I'm just going to pick them. Because I'll forget. Nice. Yeah. My favorite thing to do with zucchini and squash is to saute it and then toss it in pesto, homemade pesto. Mm, sounds good. Yeah, and then make like a side of pasta. I like good. zucchini bread with butter and honey. That sounds really good. And honey and butter. <laughs> I think this might be cantaloupe. Yes, cantaloupe. I think we might actually have homegrown cantaloupe. I've never had homegrown cantaloupe. Do you enjoy coming out in the garden? It's my favorite thing to do. I think that's one of the biggest successes of the garden. Having this as a refuge. Spent the night with the kids out here the other night. Mm -hmm. And I go up in that corner up there in the mornings and read by myself. Nobody can even see me now that the corn is out. 
Here's kind of a funny little success of the garden so far. This is uh, Brighton's garden here. <laughs> and it's like a miniature, it's like a bonsai garden. He comes out every time he sees this, he's like, look, look, our garden's growing, our garden's growing. He doesn't notice that the corn is like a quarter of the height of the corn up the hill. The reason this area is so poor because this is like where the sawdust was dumped out in this area. So we, we knew that we'd have a nitrogen deficit for probably a couple years right in this landing zone. Um, so we're using it for composting and for, we raise ducks up over here. Ducks are another success of the garden this year. You know, they've, they've reduced our bug population in the garden and gotten a large portion of their food from Roman in here. And even now, they, they're kind of grown up or growing up, they still come back to the garden. The baby ducks sleep in the garden every night. They sleep right up there near where they were raised in that cage in a little A-frame shelter. They kind of know this as home. Well, folks, thanks for joining us for this little garden walkthrough as we looked at volunteers and successes and successful volunteers in the garden. 